To really know what makes a great city work, you have to peel back its skin and expose its secret life force. A system of incredible complexity and technology that millions depend on but few understand. A fantastic voyage now begins, a journey deep inside the world's mega cities. Once, it was the capital of the world's greatest empire. Today, London remains a crossroads of the world. Like most megacities, London was built on a river, but it survives because of three rivers. On water, on land, and in the air. To survive, London must keep all three streams flowing. Yet every minute, in all three dimensions, millions of people are on a collision course. To avert disaster, this megacity keeps a sleepless vigil. These are its sentinels, cameras, sensors, radar. London is the most surveilled city on the planet. 24 hours a day, on land and river and in the sky, Big Brother is watching. Heathrow, gateway to London. No airport on Earth does more with less. 1,400 flights a day. 63 million passengers a year. A control tower more than 55 years old. And the most daunting number of all, two. Just two runways to handle almost half a million flights a year. The busiest international airspace in the world. Watching over this frenzy of flight are 100 pairs of eyes. The air traffic controllers. Among them, Adrian Dolan. We've just got a constant flow of traffic from 6 in the morning to 11 at night. You might think that with the number of aircraft that we handle every day, how on earth do we do it? How do we get all those aer aeroplanes in and out of the airport? It's actually extremely regimented. With so little room to manoeuvre, the choreography and the timing must be perfect. With only two runways, Heathrow dedicates one to landings and one to takeoffs. At most airports, when two planes take off in the same direction, the margin of safety between them must be at least two minutes. For Heathrow, two minutes is too long. They're forced to follow a more complex pattern. By alternating takeoff directions, Heathrow closes the gap, and their performance is legendary. On a sunny day, once wheels leave the tarmac, the next plane follows as quickly as 45 seconds later. That gap is called the Heathrow Minute. The same precise planning controls landings. 30 miles out of Heathrow, inbounds are rooted into four corkscrew holding patterns called stacks. Planes enter a stack around 15,000 feet. After a series of descending spirals, they exit at 7,000 feet. As one leaves, the rest descend one level and a new plane enters the stack. 10 miles out, Planes from all four stacks are vectored into a single line for landing. Inbounds glide past outbounds a thousand feet apart in a synchronized dance, choreographed down to the second. And that's what it's all about. It's all about maximum tuning all the way down to the very end, very fine tuning. So in that way we can pack as many airplanes into the landing runway as possible. So all you've got to do is just land them, vacate them, land them, vacate them, constant flow of traffic. To orchestrate takeoffs and landings takes the tightest of choreography. 
But thousands of feet above the tarmac, a dance even more complex plays out. To anyone else, these are just blips on the screen. Yet each blip means millions of dollars of machinery and hundreds of lives. If two blips ever touch, disaster. August the 27th, 1997. Another cloudy day in London. A Virgin Express Boeing 737 misses its approach to Heathrow. The tower turns the aircraft onto a northwest heading for reapproach. Unwittingly, on the same flight path as a British Airways 757. In the clouds, neither plane sees the other. Suddenly, the tower catches the mistake and reroutes the planes, but not before they pass within a whisker of each other. A mere 200 feet, a split second from disaster. The fate of every blip in the sky rests with the air traffic controllers, the men and women of ATC. ATC is the, the eyes of the City of London. There's always two or three sets of eyes watching any one plane at the same time. The best view of Heathrow itself is from the venerable Old Tower's observation deck. Restricted to ATC controllers, it offers a rare view of Heathrow's sprawling backyard. We've got this huge city in itself, this airport, it's fantastic. We've got a million flights coming in and out of the London area every year. Half a million of those are using this airport alone. And when you come to work first thing in the morning and you see that string of lights approaching the airport in the sky and you think about the people all over the world are coming into this city, it's an amazing buzz. With planes racing in from every point of the compass, the challenge is keeping them apart. The radar controller's job is often 